So I'm going to introduce myself again, but for some guys it might be a little bit repetitive because I've been to other meetings before and also to the weekly Q&As, which are also great to join for next week on Friday if you have any questions. I'm Luisa, I'm from the Netherlands, I'm 20 years old. Um, I live in Alkmaar, which is where the tour is going to be about, but I study law and society in Amsterdam. And I've been in X culture since 2020 as a student, then as a coach, then as a coaching manager, and now I'm an admin. And yes, I really can't imagine my life now without X culture. So what we're going to be doing today is an interactive tour of where I'm from. And because of that, I also want you to encourage, if you're able, put on your camera, um, interact, put things in the chat. I'm gonna ask Leon and also Ankit, if you see any things in the chat pop up, you can interrupt me or people can unmute themselves and I can answer some questions. Yeah, sounds perfect. Okay. So what we're going to do today is first, I'm going to give you a little bit of general info about the Netherlands. Then I have a couple of fun facts about the Netherlands. And then we're going to the really interesting part, at least I hope, the interactive trip in Alkmaar. And then I have a special story about the 8th of October. And then I have some time for all of your questions. Okay. First of all, has anybody here been to the Netherlands before? If not, that's totally okay, because today I'm also going to be telling a little bit more about the country. The Netherlands is kind of a small country in area, and it's located like in Europe, and it's very densely populated, so we have quite a lot of people for the area. Yes, I have the population numbers. It used to be like 17 <laughs> million, but now 17, now we're almost at 18. So yes, we have to change the song because we have one song with a population, but they keep having to update the song because it's growing so much. And the official language is Dutch. And we also have some other regional languages, which are official languages only in the areas they are spoken. For example, Fries. And I think you can also see my pointer. This is Friesland. And this is quite close to where I actually live here in North Holland. And there they have like a something that's actually recognized as a language freeze. And you can use it, even put it into Google Translate and have it translate. And it's quite a different language. Like I don't understand it because I can't speak it, even though a lot of my family is from there, but I don't speak the language. But it's very interesting language. And then, the Netherlands is a constitutional monarchy, which means we still have a monarchy, but they don't actually make the decisions. They, they are made by the government, by parliament. However, our king and queen fulfill mostly symbolic rules. And here you have like a picture. And actually, I was also surprised. It's quite an informal picture because nowadays they're really more like close to also the people and more kind of role models. And as you can see, you can see our king, Willem Alexander. And I think he's the fifth because most of our kings have been called Willem Alexander. Then you have his wife, the queen Maxima, and Maxima is originally from Argentina. And then you have their three daughters, Alexia, Ariana, and Amalia, the one with the yellow jacket, and she is our crown princess and will be the next in line.
And the capital is Amsterdam. And I think most of you have heard from that. I study there as well, so I'm there quite often. But today, on purpose, I'm going to be telling about Alkmaar because Amsterdam is very popular. A lot of tourists come there. However, the Netherlands has such, has such a lot of rich history and interesting places. And only coming to Amsterdam is interesting, but you won't see uh, everything of the Netherlands. You will only see Amsterdam because Amsterdam is a quite an international nature. And it's a very big city. And also, if you are in Amsterdam, the place we're going to today, Alkmaar, is less than an hour's drive. So if you are all the way in the Netherlands, why not make the drive over? Okay, some fun facts. First of all, we are a biking country. We use bikes to come around. And that's because of a couple of reasons. The Netherlands is quite flat. We don't have mountains, only some very small hills. So you don't have to bike uphill a lot. Second and all, as I said, it's very densely populated. Things are really close together. Also, it's quite an old country. So a lot of the infrastructure was not built for cars. So in some situations, if you're in an inner, inner city, it's just a lot easier and faster to go by bike. And if you see the picture, you see that we don't only bike if it's nice weather, but also in rain or storms or snow. And the second one I think is good news if you are a chocolate lover. I don't know if we have any people here who love chocolates. Wow, in the Netherlands, it's totally accepted to put chocolates on your bread for breakfast. And you see a lot of different, you have hagelslag, which are like the tiny drops of chocolate. If you like some bigger chunks like I do, you have flokke. You also have like, if you don't like chocolate, you also have hagelslag made of like fruit paste. You can have different charms, you can have dark, milk chocolate, white chocolate, colorful chocolate. So really a good place for chocolate lovers. And the last fun fact is about the province of Flevoland. Because as I said, the Netherlands is a small country. So at some time you're going to run out of space. So we had a Part of the country that was water and they built it into a province. They made land out of the sea. And the water and the sea in Dutch culture is really important because also a lot of the country is like below sea level. So if we don't do proper water um, support, if we don't buy, build enough dikes and monitor them, the country would flood. And that's also why the Netherlands is like has, which is very unique, um, elections for water council. We elect the people who decide what we're doing with water because it plays such an important role in our culture. Okay, so now we're going to the tour of Alkmaar. And before we start, I want to tell a little bit about this tour and the history behind it. Because this is actually the third time we do this tour. Because the first time I did this, I was a student. I was not 18 yet. I think Leon was also there, <laughs> I don't know. I was really, really shy and really afraid to speak and I was sweating a lot. And then I did it again when I was a coach. And since then I will be in charge of the virtual tours later on and helping out with them. And also this week, I went back to it and looked at the presentation and made, this is a new presentation, it's not a repeat. So you're getting an original uh, presentation today. The other two presentations are still on YouTube as well as our, any other virtual tours we've done. So you can always watch them back. Yeah, and it was really fun for me to look at it back, look at like some of the things I did then and also how much I've changed and grown since then. So for me, it was really fun to prepare and I hope you have as much fun listening to it as I had preparing it. Okay, 
So just to give you a little bit of an impression about the city, Alkmaar is quite an old city. So it kind of has looks that are like similar to Dutch uh, bigger cities like Amsterdam, Groningen. It has some very similar things. You have the canals, the warehouses. And as I said, because it's such a densely populated area, especially in the cities, a lot of the houses are very narrow and already went up in the air instead of this way because there was not that much space. And in that time, Alkmaar also used to be an important trade city. It doesn't really have this character now anymore, but that's also why a lot of houses were warehouses because you can also, there's a canal that goes like through a large part of the country. So the water was also used to transport things. And we're also really famous for cheese markets. And as you can see, I also have a picture in the snow. It doesn't happen that often, but then the whole city is like very nice. And here you see like the old boats from back in the time, because sometimes in Alkmaar, we still put that back on. So now I have some facts about Alkmaar. And here you can see the name Kaaskoppen, which means cheese hats. Because I said Alkmaar uh, had a cheese market, which was really important to buy cheese. Nowadays, the cheese market is still there, but it's more for historical purposes and also for tourists. But also local youth can go to it as well to learn about that. However, it does not have the same practical influence it had back in the day, but it's still really influential since it gets a lot of tourists to the city, which also really determines how this inner city looks because it's also a lot of things in the inner city are also built for tourists and it's always nice to let people learn about our city. I think Alkmaar is really ha happy to have all the tourists. And we don't have the numbers Amsterdam has yet, so it's not that much of a problem. There, are, there are still a lot of things to explore, and it's not too busy. It's still very livable, and there are a lot of hidden away things you can find. So that's why we are called cheese hats, and you can call yourself that if you were also born in Alkmaar and lived there your whole life. And I'm a Kaaskop. My parents aren't, but I was born in Alkmaar, so I am one. And the population is 100,000. However, this is for the municipality. Alkmaar can refer to Alkmaar the city, but also to the municipality of Alkmaar, which also, Alkmaar, as you can see, is in the top of the Netherlands, and it's a... Uh, for that area a little bit of a bigger city that area has a lot of like agriculture and also a lot of small villages and some of the small villages like the graf the rijp stompetore kudijk are with a municipality because they're too small to govern on their own so that's where the population comes from however the number of people that live in the city is quite lower and Alkmaar already got its city rights in 1254. So since then, it has been a city. So that is quite a while ago. So now let's go for a more interactive trip. Because what we're going to be doing is I will lead you through an interactive tour of Alkmaar. However, I will not be the one deciding where we are going. I will be giving you three different options and you can choose where you want to go. Okay, are you guys ready to start? Then, if you can open Slido and enter this code or you can um, uh, scan the QR codes. I don't know if anybody can also type the code in the chat for when I go to the next screen, but 
And if you're not able to join, you can also play along in the comments. Okay, for now, I will give you a little bit to join the slides. Because Alkmaar, even though it's not that big of a city, it has a lot to do and I can't encompass anything, but I have found some more well-known attractions and also some less things. So when you go to Alkmaar, well, I think the first thing you want to do after you've traveled for a long time is like drop up your luggage and find a place to stay. So for this, we have three different options you can choose. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the first one is the Fallon Hotel in Alkmaar. And you can look at a picture and I'm like, ooh. It looks a little bit weird, right? Doesn't really look very welcoming or inviting. And that's because it used to be a prison. And don't worry, the rooms have are now very luxurious. And this is a place for the more adventurous souls, but because they also give tour of the place who wants to learn of the history and have a really unique experience. And this is cl also close to the city center. However, I can also understand that you like a little bit more of a calm environment. And there we have option two, which is a camping, where you can either take your own camper or caravan or hire a little cottage. And it's still in the city, but it's a little bit more quiet and there is a little bit more nature and you're really close to the beach as well if you're there so you can go well depends if you are an early riser you can see the sunrise or otherwise you can see the sun go down especially when you're eating something on a little restaurant on the beach and the third option is in the city center and that is the King's Inn, which is a an hotel and a hostel. So you have a nicer hotel there, but also a hostel if you uh, want a more budget-friendly option. It's directly located in a canal, canal, so you can also see the bike boats, which are like little bikes. But to get them forward, you like bike. Yes, in the Netherlands, we find a way to turn everything into a bike one of our talents, and you can also hire like a real boat. So that's also an option if you want to stay in the city center. So which one would you guys choose? And you can see the QR code and the link again. Where would you like to stay? Please pick your answers. Leon, where would you like to stay? I go for the camping. Yeah, I was kind of expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they all look actually very cool, but that's probably where I'd be the most comfortable. So. Yeah, I also yeah, see I the like Fallon that. Hotel Alkmaar. I can also understand that choice. Okay. Anybody maybe want to say their choice out loud or, or explain why they want to stay there? Well, I think we have a clear winner, the camping. So let's go there. So if you would have chosen the Fallon Hotel, this is where you would have stayed. So very quickly, you can see it's very luxurious on the inside. And here you have the camping. So for Dutch proportions, I would say it's like a smaller city camping. 
because you're close to the city, you also have larger ones. And it's like a little piece of like grass. Everything is very close to each other. So you can really talk to your neighbors and you have like fields where you can take your own stuff. But for example, if you're flying, you can also rent a cottage and you can see a very nice field here as well. And personally, I think this is a great option. Uh, camping is often a little bit more budget friendly, but also the city center can be quite loud in the evening and just going back to nature and just kind of experiencing the quiet is also really interesting. So that's also something I want to do. And I also think this is also something people from Alkmaar can do if they want to like go on a holiday in their own city, just go to the camping for a few nights, like go with your children and try to set up a tent together, guaranteed fun. And the last option was this one, where you can see the canal plays a large role in the entertainment. Okay, so now we had some time to drop off or language at the camping. And now we're going for activities. And I have some more obvious activities and some less. So as I said, Alkmaar is really known for its cheese. And every Friday there is a cheese market during the main season. However, even if you're not there on a Friday, there is a cheese museum you can always go to. So the first option is that we can go to the cheese museum and see how the cheese is made. And the second one is actually something I wouldn't say is only for tourists. I remember as a child going to this far, the Stadsboerderij, which means city farm. So you have a, because as I said in the Netherlands and also this area was really known for farmers and agriculture. So we have a little bit of, farm in the city where children can play and I really remember going there with my grandparents as a child a lot. So this is also something that's not only for tourists. And the third one is the Beatles Museum, which apparently I heard John Lennon's guitar was made in Alkmaar, so that's why there, we have a museum here. Also, one secret, even though it's called the Beatles Museum, they also have a whole section for Elvis Presley. So you can go there as well. So now I'm wondering what your choice would be. Would you like to go to the Cheese Museum, the City Farm, or the Beatles Museum? Louisa, this is a really hard choice. <laughs> well if you have a come we will just do all three but for now we have to choose <laughs> what would you choose um i'm kind of torn between because like okay i went with the beatles museum but i was kind of like cheese because you know like it's cheese and then because also... it's cheese yeah <laughs> And then also the like the fact that it's like there's animals and stuff in the other one. So I'll go with beetles just for the fact that Yeah, but I think where you are there are more interesting animals than there. <laughs> <laughs> I see you guys like cheese, which is a good thing. Especially if you go to Alkmaar, because my father doesn't eat cheese, uh, so he doesn't live in the right city. <laughs> because we eat a lot of cheese here. I do like cheese, so I live in the right city for it. So let's get some cheese then. So as you can see, it's really small because... It's really small and cozy, and you can see they upgraded it recently, so that's more interactive for cre for children. You can see the cheese ball lights. I haven't seen those yet because they're new, but I really liked how they have like the cheese seats, and it's really also interesting. And it's also in a monumental building, which uh, has like a tower you can climb up to. 
And you have like a lot of interactive games since they also want it for children. And here you can see also a cow because they also have an exhibition from cow to cheese where they show, as, as you can see, how they make cheese. It's just also really interesting. Well, also a fun fact is, um, even though we're the cheese city, it has been a long time since Alkmaar actually produced a special cheese. But nowadays, there is like a project to again produce cheese from Alkmaar, which they had like a pilot and they sent out the first cheeses and I tasted it. And I know you have to take my word for it, but it was the best cheese. So don't tell that to the other cheese city. I think most of you have heard from Gouda cheese or Gouda cheese, but Cicle 3, I think, or cheese is better. So you should go here for cheese, but don't tell Gouda. Yeah, and this is like the city farm, which is really playing. And I remember that you could like milk the fake cow as a child. I don't know, that's, that's one of my memories. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, uh, and it used to be also a deer camp, but not anymore because it is quite an old one. So it has been also updated and also for like ethical reasons, there are now some different kind of animals and a different kind of rules in place for the welfare of the animals as well. Oh yeah, and um, yeah. This one is actually pretty cool when I looked on the inside and you can also see like the iconic crosswalk cover. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm actually pretty hungry right now. So let's find a place to eat. So first of all, we have the blue district in Alkmaar. So in the world, you have certain blue zones and blue zones are places where people live longer. And there is always some debate. Why do people live longer? Is it maybe because of their diet? So this restaurant took on that idea and has like um, all kinds of courses based on the areas where people live longer. And it has a lot of like really interesting, nice dishes with like vegetarian vegan and meat options but yeah really interesting so now from like the healthy restaurant maybe you have a little bit more of a sweet tooth we have sweet and and a tea and antiques Alkmaar which is in this narrow city narrow street and there you have waffles homemade waffles, all kinds of different kinds of like old Dutch sweets. You have stroopwafels, fresh apple pie. And it's also a museum, a sweet museum and uh, antiques. And the lady owning it is really nice. Don't know why I have to mention that, but it's really a nice environment. And the third one is if you like a little bit more of an expensive and extravagant dinner, you should go to Here van Sonoy, where you can get really high cuisine and you can also really sit on the terrace. So now my question is, what kind of food would you guys like? I see Leon thinking, and personally, I think she's, oh, but I really like the vegan and vegetarian options. But also, the sweet sounds good. Is that your inner monologue? Yep. <laughs> you had me sold on the first one, and then you brought up the second one, and I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. No, I can't understand that. Oh, yeah, somebody picked Blue District as well. Yeah, so it was actually funny. I was searching for the name because it was called the Blue Zones. So I was searching for a picture and I couldn't find the restaurant. But apparently there was like an American company called Blue Zone that actually <laughs> took them to, wanted to sue them. So then they changed the name. So I was like, 
I swear I remember it was called the Blue Zone. So I thought my memory had left me, but it hadn't. It just changed names. Um, is it a tie? Yeah, so if it's a tie, somebody can give the vote or I'm gonna make it. I think we'll, we'll go for the Sweet Leon, do you agree? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Executive decision on our behalf. So this is Blue District, and as you can see very clearly, the dishes are an artwork on the plates. And here we go into that, and if you can see, it really looks all touch, and you can see the women also in like, really cute dresses with like that. Actually, I matched the scene because I'm also in such a dress right now. And you have like all these soap waffles, all Dutch candy waffles, like that are made right in front of your eyes. And actually I walk past this quite a lot because my sister has a restaurant in the, in the same street. And they are always like standing there with like a plate of like food that you can try. And it's also a museum and you can sit down. So I really like all the candy and stuff, which is also, it's of course nice for tourists, but of course I still get tempted because they also have chocolates and fresh trope waffles, which are like waffles with caramel in between. And that's like one of the best known Dutch treats. So if you're here, you should really try it. It's not the only place that I said you can try it, but I think this is a good one to start. And also, since it was a tie, this is the luxury place where you have a nice terrace and luxury food. My grandparents said it was really good, but I haven't been there myself since I'm kind of more somebody who likes a little bit more like simple foods or like unique foods. I'm not really somebody who goes to a fancy restaurant all of the time. But if that's your cup of tea, it's a really great option. Okay, so now it's time for a little bit of history. And actually it's a really piece of interesting history. And that's the 8th of October, and it's now September, so in less than a month, we will celebrate this holiday again. And it's a really special year, because now it has been 450 years. And to tell you this, I want to go back to the year 1573. So I will take you, uh, let's paint the picture a little bit, okay? Because at that time, the Netherlands was not independent yet. Actually, the Netherlands was uh, governed by the Spanish at the time. However, at that time, cities themselves had a lot of influence. Cities were gated and cities really were really important. And you had also different cities that had in the conflict, different sides, right? And then we come to Alkmaar because uh, some of the cities in the Netherlands declared they wanted to be independent. So a uh, war for independence started against the Spanish, which actually also has some religious tendencies underlying. So not the whole of the Netherlands agreed, but at that time it was a very, a period with a lot of tension. And so let's go back to Alkmaar. Alkmaar did not want to be under the rule of the Spanish anymore. However, the Spanish, of course, didn't agree with that. So they wanted to attack the city of Alkmaar. And at that time, Alkmaar was a smaller city than it is now, and it had a full on wall. So you could lock the gates and nobody got in. However, the gate was not fully finished yet. However, the Spanish were coming. So what do we do? We need to finish the wall. 
So what they did in that period is they put a lot of garbage and other stuff and they had like the walls. It might have not been the best quality and every time like a cannonball hit the city walls, they had to like refill the holes with everything to, they could find and chairs. So it was like not the nicest looking wall, it was for protection. So I have a little painting to illustrate how the city wall looked. And as you can see, you see the citizen of Alkmaar fighting back against the Spanish. And actually, Alkmaar ultimately won this war, or the battle, because the war uh, took a long time, but they won the battle around Alkmaar. So what the Spanish did was when they could not enter Alkmaar straight away, they surrounded Alkmaar so no food and other supplies could go in. That way, eventually, the city had to give up. However, the current Willem van Oranje, which was like the leader of the people who wanted independence, they sent him a letter and somebody sneaked out of the city to, with a letter in like a stick they used and they went through all the walls. And the idea was um, to use water because as I said in the beginning, water plays a really important role in the Netherlands and in Alkmaar it was no different. So when the Spanish were there and they had all their cannons, they decided to break the dikes and the water was coming in. So the ground became very muddy and very wet. And for the Spanish, they weren't used to this and their cannons were getting stuck in the mud. So ultimately they had to retreat. And Alkmaar was the first city that won against the Spanish that wasn't beaten by them. and. The city were, uh, remained free till this day, and ultimately the Netherlands also became independent from Spain. And that is also really interesting, and that also is where, and that happened at the 8th of October. And that's also where the city motto comes from in the recording to 8th of October, which in Alkmaar begins the victory. And as you can imagine, it's really important in our city, this story. Even nowadays, um, it's a long time ago. There are no hard feelings against the Spanish war front now. And it's not really relevant, but it's still a really important a bit of history in our city, even though it's so long ago. And because it's now 450 years, I think it's really important to share the stories because I now told you the broad story. However, this experience has a lot of really small but important stories. And I have chosen one that speaks to me and I hope it also speaks to you. Okay, so you can see a picture of a woman, woman standing here. And as you can see, the woman is standing courageously, hand on her hip, stick in hand, and you can see her even carrying a sword. We're talking about the 16th century right now, so this really wasn't something that was normal for women to do. And the woman on this picture is Trein Rembrandt. And Trein Rembrandt is seen as the female hero of the, of the Battle of Alkmaar. Or as we call it in the Netherlands, Beleg van Alkmaar. And, what she, and it's rumored that she and the other women in town, they went to the roles and they helped the men to fight by... They had like kettles of boiling water they throw at the Spanish and hot air and all kinds of substances and things you could throw from the walls to attack them because of course there was there weren't enough real weapons in the city, so they had to get creative. And the rumor is that she was a hero and she really 
mature older women, women and young girls were encouraged to help and protect their city. Which in that time, women didn't fight in war, so it was really something that was quite extraordinary. And it's rumored that she only was 16 at that time. So at the time she was still a child, so actually still a girl. However, there is something important to know about this story. We don't know if it's real. Um, because we can see in the 16th century, shortly after the battle ended, we see stories of talking about the exceptional behavior of the women and girls for that time and their courage. So that's already started right after the war, the stories of the women behaving that way. And that it showed great courage in helping to protect their city. However, the story of Trein Rembrandt only became visible in sources 100 years later. Which is kind of weird, because in the first 100 years after the battle, no mentions were made of her name. And after the first mention, a lot of stories and books were wrote, written about her, and there is even an, an opera being made about her. However, some historians looked and were like, actually, is this really true? Because she looks like another female hero figure in the Netherlands from Haarlem called Kenau. So there is some speculation about the fact that maybe she was made up. Um because the Alkmaar also wanted a female hero figure in the 17th century. However, um, they don't really know that. They did found that somebody, um, uh, Trein Rembrandt, she was called, but Trein Remmen, because her name was slightly different, has lived in that period. But none of her family members or any sources tell anything about her behavior during the battle. So we don't know. However, I that doesn't mean that her figure doesn't have a really important meaning in the in Alkmaar. Because a story doesn't necessarily have to be true to have value. Because what I think trying Rembrandt represents is like the the courage the women and the girls are like showed in that battle and she is just a symbol a symbol a icon for that and i think that way we can still celebrate it and even if we don't know if trine herself was really the hero we do know that the women and the girls at that time were the hero, so we still celebrate her. And Trine Rembrandt is also a great figure to tell about in the museum. And she's also become more of a symbol for the role of the women than necessarily about her own actions. And I think this is really important because at that time, time we're talking about the 16th century women were not fighting to protect themselves or their city where they're mostly in the home and even though they might not have fought like in the literal sense they found their way to help protect their city with boiling water and hair so i think that's a really important thing and also this 8th of october i'm also gonna celebrate this story And here you can see like a painting of the women like fighting. And yes, you now see the women with shorts and stuff and cattles. This picture is of course a little bit exaggerated than it really was. And nowadays, every time 
We celebrate the 8th of October. We have a huge parade with all kinds of different costumes. And we eat, we eat one special dish, surko with sausage, which uh, people who are a member of the 8th October Association get one. And here I have like a can with like, when it was COVID, they couldn't give the meal in real life. So they gave it in like a little can. And the slogan is real Alk matters eat surko with worst. That is the dish on the 8th of October. And here you can see Victorincia, which is kind of an angel-like picture, which is a symbol for the victory of Alkmaar. So that's the 8th of October. And this 8th of October, it's going to be 415 years. And we will have a really big party. On the 7th of October, because uh, this year it's on Sunday, so we celebrated one year day earlier. Okay, so thanks for your attention. Don't hesitate to ask any questions. Oh, I do have a, like a few postcards of Ogmar where you can see the cheese. Um, and some of the buildings. Let me uh, stop sharing. Do you guys have any questions or any comments about the presentation? Any questions about the Netherlands? You can put it in the chat as well if you don't feel. Yes, you don't have to talk if you don't want to. Well, Louise, I must just say, you definitely have become a pro at um, <laughs> giving a tour for your town. So, <laughs> would you really get it? What I do want to mention is that now I have given the tour myself, but later in the practical phase, you are also able to give a tour if you want to. So, um, Raphael will send out the sign up sheets then. And of course, I will help you, so you don't need to worry if you're a bit shy as well. So that's fine. How many of you guys now want to visit Alkmaar? I always did. No, yeah, I mean, after the third time, I mean, <laughs> I hope so, Leon. <laughs> Does nobody else want to visit? <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> More cheese for me then. <laughs> As I said, one. Because actually we don't produce cheese anymore. <laughs> it's like the trading of the cheese happens at Alkmaar. Not the producing of the cheese. But we do have now one type of cheese that's produced in Alkmaar. What cheese is it? <laughs> um, yeah, just like kind of like Gouda. Gouda okay. cheese. But a small produced one of like Dutch, like the Dutch round yellow cheeses. Any so, comments or questions before we end today's meeting? It doesn't seem like it. Um, so if you do have any questions, feel free to let us know now. Otherwise, we can end for today. Um, and yeah, it can be in regards to the virtual tour or anything that's coming up in the next few weeks in regards to ex-culture. Um, yeah, anything at all. Uh, we have a few moments left, so make use of the time. Otherwise, we will end the meeting.
Okay, I don't think anybody does. So I hope you all have a great weekend. Um, and I think we all need to meet up in Holland to eat cheese and <laughs> go camping. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope. Well, my English. I hope you all have an amazing week. And if you ever need any support, uh, feel free to reach out to us on Telegram, uh, or send an email to what is the email? X Culture Academy. Yes. Um, <laughs> there'll always be somebody to reach out. So we will end. I'm gonna stop the recording. Yeah.